Walgreens Boots Alliance owns the pharmacy chains Walgreens and Boots, as well as a global portfolio of healthcare-focused investments. In this video, I'm going to analyze WBA's entire business and explain why I've been adding it to my long-term dividend stock portfolio. My name is Zach, and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. Walgreens Boots Alliance has a long and dynamic history dating all the way back to 1849. If you want to view a detailed timeline of their history, then check out this page on their company website. I'll link it in the description of the video. Now, you should never invest in a business you don't understand, so let's take a deep look at WBA's current operations. We'll start with the businesses they fully own. In the United States, WBA owns the retail pharmacy Walgreens. This has more than 9,000 locations, which serve approximately 8 million customers each day. Walgreens is an omni-channel business and has been innovating heavily in the digital space. More on this later in the video. They also own Dwayne Reed, which is a popular pharmacy chain in New York City. They acquired Dwayne Reed in 2010, and many of the stores have been rebranded to include Walgreens, as shown here. WBA also owns Alliance RX Walgreens. Walgreens Prime, which is a specialty in home delivery pharmacy that provides care for patients with certain rare, chronic, and complex conditions. Additionally, WA has a majority investment in IA, which provides software-enabled pharmacy automation. It develops solutions for high-volume centralized pharmacy providers and retail pharmacies. Also, they have a software platform that provides an end-to-end -end pharmacy solution. The Synchrony software platform is the brain of all operations of pharmacy fulfillment. It handles all of the front-end logistics of workload balancing, preparing inventory, and preparing staff for the work that they have to do on a daily basis. It also manages all of the queues of work that have to do at a single user station or a piece of automation throughout a fulfillment center. The future for Symphony is very bright. A platform that will take prescriptions from the first time they're touched to all the way through the entire process delivered on time to the correct patient in the method that the patient chooses. This technology not only helps WBA's own pharmacies, but the entire pharmacy industry. The goal here is to reduce operational costs, increase productivity, and enable pharmacists to spend more time providing care to patients. Internationally, WBA owns over 4,000 retail pharmacies under the retail brand Boots in the UK, Thailand, and the Republic of Ireland. They also own Benavidas in Mexico and Ahumada in Chile. They franchise boot stores in the Middle East and Indonesia. On top of this, they have a 70% controlling interest in a joint venture with the McKesson Corporation for a pharmaceutical wholesale business in Germany. Aside from their global pharmacy presence, they also own the Number 7 Beauty Company, which dates all the way back to 1935. They have a long-standing popularity in the UK, and their core three brands are Number 7, Liz Earl Beauty, and Soap and & Glory. Number 7 is actually the number one skincare brand in the UK. The brands are available online and in over 20,000 stores in 16 markets worldwide. Their ownership under WBA provides access to more than 100 million loyalty members worldwide Wide, which will optimize digital marketing. So that wraps up their fully owned and majority owned businesses, but WBA also has a large healthcare investment portfolio. They own 30% of Amerisource Bergen, which is one of the largest global pharmaceutical sourcing and distribution services companies. In June 2021, WBA completed the sale of its fully owned Alliance Healthcare business to Amerisource Bergen for a total of $6.5 billion, made up of $6.275 billion in cash and 2 million shares of common stock. WBA used a portion of the proceeds to eliminate $3.3 billion in debt from its balance sheet and will deploy the remainder to accelerate growth of its core retail pharmacy and healthcare businesses. Other equity method investments include Boots Hearing Care, which provides digital hearing aids, batteries, and accessories. They also have a stake in Bright Spring Health Services, which provides home and community-based health services. WBA has made significant investments in China as well. They have ownership in Guangzhou, Guada, and Nanjing. Guada is the leading pharmacy chain in China with over 7,500 retail pharmacies. Guangzhou and Nanjing are two of the largest pharmaceutical wholesalers in China. I may have pronounced all 
all of those names wrong, by the way. <laughs> Option Care Health is the United States' largest independent provider of home and alternate site infusion services. Shields Health Solutions is a specialty pharmacy program that partners with hospitals to provide fully integrated, comprehensive on-site care. Finally, WBA has an investment in Village MD, which provides primary care services. This investment is extremely important to the direction of Walgreens. WBA has the goal of turning the pharmacy chain into full-service neighborhood health centers. They're partnering with Village Medical to offer primary care clinics that share locations with Walgreens. This makes Walgreens the first national pharmacy chain to offer full-service primary care clinics. It creates a seamless connection between the doctor and the pharmacy. I think this will dramatically improve customer experience, bring more traffic into Walgreens stores, and deepen Walgreens' connection with customers. I'll talk more about this later. So that's all of WBA's current business operations. As you can see, it has a global presence and is making efforts to grow beyond its flagship retail pharmacy. Walgreens Boots Alliance is a consumer-focused retail healthcare company. Another important factor to understand is the leadership of the company. WBA recently hired Rosalind Brewer to be the new CEO. The more I researched her, the more I was impressed with her experience. She started out at Kimberly Clark and climbed the ladder there for 22 years. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that's another company I like. Brewer rose from research technician to president for manufacturing and operations and the global president. In 2006, she left Kimberly Clark to join Walmart, where she eventually became the CEO. CEO of Sam's Club. In 2017, she retired from that position to become the chief operating officer of Starbucks. At Starbucks, she led their digital strategy, customer experience, product innovation, and customer rewards program. On top of this, Brewer served as a member of the board of directors at Amazon from 2019 to 2021. In early 2021, WBA announced that Roz Brewer would be the new CEO, and she's now a few months into the job. I think this was an excellent hire. Listen to this clip where she explains how her background and chemistry helped her in business. You know, so I did start off as an organic chemist for Kimberly Clark, and I was in long-range research. So I was that bench chemist, you know, doing doing all those kinds of assignments. But what really ties it together is when you're a scientist, you're curious, you ask a lot of questions, you're an analytic, so you look at data, and that translates into business. And some of the best business leaders are those who really, you know, challenge the status quo. Um, think about what's next, think about what's around the corner and around the corner from that, and sometimes can be a visionary. And I think that's the translation between being a scientist and being a business leader. Brewer is exactly who I would want to lead the next phase of WBA. She has a track record of success at companies I think highly of. Her background in managing large consumer retail businesses, optimizing consumer experience, and digital innovation fit like a glove with Walgreens' long-term strategy. Brewer just completed her first quarter as CEO in 2021 Q3. She's been focused on immersing herself in the company and executing the important vaccine rollout. They beat earnings estimates by 16.7%, which which makes four consecutive quarters of earnings beats. Brewer said, This quarter's results demonstrate continued momentum and while challenges lie ahead, we are in a strong position to grow and innovate our core retail and pharmacy businesses for the future. We are accelerating our investments to advance our operational excellence, including technology innovations that support mass personalization, pharmacy of the future, and the next phase of growth in tech-enabled healthcare. These investments are fueled by our Alliance Healthcare Divestor. They also gave updated progress on their strategic priorities. First, they are accelerating their move to create neighborhood health destinations and modernizing their pharmacies. Village Medical at Walgreens previously opened 46 locations, and they plan to open 35 more by the end of 2021. They've stated that they plan to open 600 to 700 primary care clinics at Walgreens within the next four years. WBA is continuing to use IA Pharmacy Automation, which currently supports 550 Walgreens and will soon support about 1,000 locations. Second, they are digitizing and transforming their retail offering. Walgreens Find Care platform use increased to more than 135 million visits in the third quarter, mostly driven by COVID-19 testing and vaccinations. My Walgreens membership has grown to 75 million, up from 56 million in the second quarter. This is their rewards program, which I think is going to be extremely important to the success of the company. A good rewards program will help them retain core customers and increase engagement. 
Also, I've been very impressed with the Walgreens website and app. In the Apple App Store, Walgreens is ranked number 22 in shopping and is significantly ahead of CVS at 34. This is the digital hub of the rewards program and will be vital to the digitalization efforts. Mass personalization in both physical and digital spaces through data increased sales by 1% in Q3. This effort will continue. In the early fall, Walgreens debit and credit cards will launch nationwide, which will expand their financial financial services. I think this is a good move that could tie in well with the rewards program. Finally, the company is on track for $2 billion in annual cost savings by fiscal 22 as part of their cost management program. So that should give you a good idea of WBA's current business, leadership, and future direction. Now let's take a look at their financials. Despite how diversified Walgreens Boots Alliance appears to be, their retail pharmacies are by far the most significant aspect of their business. In 2021, it's estimated that 93% of their revenue will come from retail pharmacy and 7% from pharmaceutical wholesale. Of retail pharmacy, the overwhelming majority of that comes from their U.S. business. If we break that down by segment, 64.9% of total revenue comes from U.S. prescription drugs, 20.6% from U.S. over-the-counter drugs and merchandise, while only 7.48% comes from international pharmacies. The breakdown is very similar when it comes to their free cash flow. Over the last 10 years, WBA's revenue has consistently grown from $67.4 billion to $139.5 billion, which is a 7.5% compound annual growth rate. Their gross profit grew from $18.9 billion to $28 billion, which is a 4% compound annual growth rate. Their profit grew at a lower rate due to a compression in margins, which we will discuss later. Their net income and EPS have consistently grown with 2020 being a fluke year. The pandemic negatively affected their business through increased costs, lower foot traffic in stores, and lower doctor visits, which led to less new prescriptions. The company said their profits were dragged down primarily by the United Kingdom boot stores. Despite this, the company still generates significant free cash flow and is now returning to 2019 levels. Also, the company seems to buy back shares when possible. Their share count has decreased over time, but they actually issued new shares from 2013 to 2017. If you look at their stock price, it actually makes sense that they did this though, as they raised money at valuations, which may have been overpriced at the time. Also, Walgreens has a very strong dividend, which has consecutively grown for over 45 years. WBA has a $1.9 91 cent annual dividend payout, giving it a 4.1% dividend yield at its current price. The dividend has a 5.36% five year compound annual growth rate. They just announced a 2% raise after 2020, which was a weak year for them. WBA has a current payout ratio of 39% based on forward earnings, so there's plenty of room to grow the dividend and reinvest for more growth. Also, the dividend is only 28% of their current free cash flow. There are risks to investing in WBA. The pharmacy industry has a high amount of competition. Not only does Walgreens face the threat of CVS, but there are many other stores like Walmart, Costco, and Kroger who now offer pharmacy services. Also, Amazon just announced Amazon Pharmacy, which will have your prescriptions delivered through Amazon Prime. So there is a large battle in this space. Luckily, Walgreens and CVS have the largest market share by a significant margin. Walgreens has an existing customer base and offers all the same services as their competitors. They have in-store, drive-through, and delivery. You can get same-day prescription delivery at an extra fee and one to two-day delivery for free. I think Walgreens will be able to retain and grow their customer base over time, especially if their My Walgreens Rewards program continues to grow and they succeed in turning Walgreens into overall health destinations. Offering primary care would be huge and really help develop an economic moat. Other risks include decreasing margins, which has been caused by reduction and third-party drug reimbursement levels from private or governmental agency plans. This is part of the reason why margins have been decreasing in recent years. Also, the threat of government regulation over healthcare is a risk looming over the entire sector. That's why many healthcare stocks are trading at such attractive valuations. Finally, another perceived risk is slower growth after the vaccine rollout. Now, I find this silly and very short-term thinking. First off, the company will continue giving out vaccines, and it's very likely that will be a recurring booster shot well into the future. Also, this business is not vaccine dependent, and a return to normal will likely mean a return to normal for Walgreens. Yes, the vaccines bring in foot traffic, but a vaccinated public will just mean a return to normality. WBA just beat Q3 earnings by 16.7%, and they raised fiscal 2021 guidance from mid to high single-digit growth to around 10% growth. 
The cherry on top here is the current valuation. Walgreens has a market cap of $39 billion and is trading at a forward PE of 9. This is super cheap for a company like this in our current market. Also, you can buy the stock at over a 4% dividend yield on cost, which is great compared to the company historically. I've started buying a lot more WBA stock recently. It's cheap and I have a low risk of losing money. It pays a solid dividend and I see reliable growth on the horizon. I think this stock has potential for huge capital appreciation if they execute over the next few years. Today, I own 76.77 shares of WBA at an average cost of $44.58. This gives me a 4.24% dividend yield on cost. I'm likely to continue buying more if the stock goes down, but don't take my advice blindly and be sure to do your own research before making any investment decisions. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. I'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you follow me on Twitter, link in the description, you can get real-time updates of my buys and dividends coming in. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Dividend Data. You can support the channel over on Patreon where you can gain access to a community Discord server. The link is in the description. Please leave a comment below and thank you for watching.